Welcome to this live stream of Bio Menace, released by Apogee Software in 1993. This is an action platformer, and I have played this before, but it's been a very, very, very long time. So let's get into it. Press F1 for help and order info. Let's do that and check it out. Let's see what's going on with this story. We are Snake Logan, a top secret operative for the CIA. Order to complete missions that others would regard as suicidal. Okay, so thousands of monster-like creatures are on a rampage of destruction through our Tom metro city. Dr. Mangle is behind this. Previously a scientist for a top secret genetics research firm gone bad. Okay, so we're going to run and gun through the city looking for Dr. Mangle. And our plane was just shot down and, and that's where we're starting. So we can run, we can jump, throw grenades, shoot, climb, do things, go into doors. Quick save and quick load. And here's all our items. So we have some weapons and then we have some special items that are used to interact with the environment it looks like. And secret levels. Let's see if we can find some secrets while we play here. Alright, I'm going to play with my joystick with my Xbox controller. And normal. Why not? Always go to the left first. So we picked up a machine gun and some grenades there. got a key. And it looks like we can go up higher. Maybe we need to put something right there to do that. I'm not sure. Assuming that's our blue, uh, that blue bar is our health, we don't have too much to start out with. <laughs> nice, so there's a button to shoot and a button to jump, and then up and the shoot button at the same time through a grenade. That's, that's how that works. I meant to just fire the machine gun there. So this game was released in 1993 and by then most of our games had proper sound, ad-lib and sound blaster sound. Not just PC speaker anymore. Ok, 
Okay. They will not wait for me to get off the ladder to start moving toward me. Out of machine gun bullets, so it's... It's down to the regular, regular weapon. Each door needs a key to open it, it looks like. This man is very calm in the face of this danger. I guess that's what he's trained for. And in this world, the CIA is responsible for this type of situation. We need health, we're about to die. I guess I'll do a quick save here, F7. Spacebar opens up our status screen. And that shows us how much stuff we have and what our score is and everything else. There we go. First aid kit restores us to full health. Very good. Find out where these crystal shards go, okay? So we have one shard now, and we have to figure out what to do with that. Can I go up here? Nope. So there's some stuff down there. That's our checkpoint. So the shard lowers this field here. Okay, so in each level there's somebody that we have to rescue and they'll hold the key to the exit. And we've got red grenades now. These, I bet, are more powerful. Kind of tough to avoid this. And how do we get that open? So I wonder if that's what those secret keys are used for. Maybe. We'll see. Or actually, I bet it's this. The switch activates a bridge. Yeah, that was that. Okay, so we got full health there, and I think that was also a secret level key that we picked up there. And now we can see if that stuff at the beginning is unlocked.
Okay, and earlier we saw in the message a platform was activated somewhere, and that's this thing here. Super gun, nice. Oops. Machine gun would be nice. And I think that is the secret level key. Secret level gem. Secret level gem. So what do those do? We'll find out. Now we can head to the next level. And a third secret level gym there. There was a machine gun and a grenade hidden behind this sign. So this is definitely going to be the kind of game with secrets hidden all around. Sometimes behind objects. So we had the super gun at the beginning of the stage. Sorry, at the end of the last stage, but it seems to have gone away. I guess special weapons go away when you move from one stage to the other. Yeah, these are not walls, you can walk behind them. There's a mean looking thing up there. I'm going to try to use grenades. Plasma bolts. So that's another special weapon for us. Oh, death there. So those demons are invincible when they assume fire form. This music is kind of a jazzy rendition of Pop Goes the Weasel. Okay, the plasma bolts will take out those little rockets. The regular weapon won't. Thank you. 
we're in business with the special weapons, they do a lot better than the regular weapons against these enemies. RoboPal gives you extra firepower. Oh, okay, he's a familiar. Nice. Got a first aid kit just when we needed it the most. So the hostages are a trail for us to follow to Dr. Mangle. So this is just his hobby. Can we get up there? Doesn't look like it, but this game looks like it's got its secrets. So we have no machine gun now and we're down to just the regular gun. We'll probably find some machine guns hidden behind the trees or something. Here we go, plasma bolts. There's a delay between pressing the button and firing, so that takes a little getting used to.
That was an invincibility potion. See how landmines work. Okay, you just place them right where you're standing and wait for somebody to walk into them, I guess. right there. We're also almost dead. It'd be nice to be able to switch between the special weapons. Whoops. But I don't think we can. There's a fair amount of variety in the graphics here, that's nice. The action is pretty standard platforming fare, I'd say. There's not a lot of variety, not a lot of surprise here, so having the variety in the graphics is kind of nice to keep things interesting. special weapons also keeps things interesting and having reasons to use them. There's certain enemies that can't be 
easily destroyed by the regular weapons, which are pretty weak. Makes the special weapons something you actually appreciate. I do want to see if there's a way to switch between special weapons. I don't see anything. Which is unfortunate because I don't really want to use the landmines. back in there until we know the correct sequence. This game is full of some grisly scenery. It was released in 1993, and that's really when graphic violence was on the up and up for arcade games. How about now? Wolfenstein 3D was released in 92, so was Mortal Kombat. Doom was released also in 93, same year as this game. So you can see that Biomenace is hopping on this graphic violence trend. Whoops. In a charming, cartoony, harmless kind of way, of course. These are EGA graphics. These graphics are nice, they look good. They were dated though, even when the game was released. In 1993, a fair amount of stuff was being done in VGA, and compared to what was happening on the 16 bit consoles, SNES and Genesis at the time. Biomenace looks pretty primitive. And I don't think people really talk about Biomenace now. And I don't remember if it was really a hit at the time or not. 
but it could be because it was technically kind of a primitive game, even at the time it was released. Okay, so we need to find that color sequence, and that's probably where the item is we need to rescue the hostage, and that's probably, and that's of course how we need to leave the stage by rescuing the hostage. So, where's the color sequence hidden? Picking up that green jewel would have done something. Okay, we'll jump on this, see where this takes us. Fifty thousand points, but no luck. Oh, we do have the key card, so we can rescue the hostage. Let's take one more look back over here see if we can figure out how to get into that area. I guess for now we'll move on. Sewer, the obligatory sewer level. Grenades seem to be the best special weapon in this game.
most of the doors don't have anything you really need. They have things that improve your score. But you kind of have to open them anyway, because some of them do have required items. Bringing back bad Codename Viper memories for me. Just inching along here because these little slimes are not destructible with the machine gun along. Oh man, they're gonna get us before we can get to that first aid kit. So we gotta find some grenades and take those little guys out of our way. Also fine. They are technically possible to avoid, but pretty difficult. Nice Valium reference. The controls here are pretty good for a PC platformer of the time. As I remember it, it was just a long time before the controls in computer games caught up to the tightness of the ones in the console games. I could be wrong. And as we play through more and uncover stuff that 
I'd forgotten about or never even knew of. Maybe we'll find that to be wrong. But everything's pretty good here, and that's because, in part at least, because this game uses one of the Commander Keen engines. And those are very good. This is Nintendo platforming. The bounding boxes aren't quite what you want. They're a little larger than the character in unexpected ways. So, minor gripe, but it is noticeable. Spike right here. No key. Access denied. George Broussard produced this. I remember him as the creator of Pharaoh's Tomb. Also, co, co owner of Apogee, he produced many of their games. That looks like a color code sequence that perhaps we're supposed to remember. So I'll write it down. Blue, cyan, green, magenta, and orange, I guess.
Not what we meant to do here, and now unfortunately we stand around here and wait to die. So there could be great stuff in there, I guess. That's probably a cache of weapons and stuff, but now it's open. We can't try again. I guess we'll save. I wonder what happens if we lose all the lives. the shard we needed. the hostage. Pretty good effort for being created by just one person, Jim Norwood. He did all the programming, all the graphics, as far as I know. Everything but the sound. The sound was done by Bobby Prince. Being homeless is better than being stuck behind a barrier for the rest of your days.
And the music's fine, it's background music. Just something to kind of occupy the space. boss. It is a boss. There's a boss meter up there. Okay, so we'll be fighting with our grenades and machine gun. I am Skull Man. I shall kill you and collect your skull as I have with all these others. <laughs> Please don't. This is going to be a pretty tough boss fight. clip to do this in. It kind of looks like you can destroy the hands, like they fall, and when they... when they're falling toward you...
let's save right here, right before we enter the arena. So if you pass under the hands while they're low, you're taking a hit. Also, loading moves you back to the beginning of the stage. That was cheap on their part. I also just noticed a ladder up there. Let's see what it gets us. Okay, we get a familiar. That's good. But you take one hit, you lose your familiar.
this may be the sticking point for now. Because I have to figure out the kind of patterns that he's going to use. Figure out a way to weave around those hands and get shots off onto that guy. Or destroy the hands, but it kind of doesn't seem worth it. Got it. The trick was to fight from that ladder rather than the left little cut in on the left there. Elevator. Skull Man was here. He's a graffiti guy. See what happens when we get a game over. Nothing, we just stopped playing. Okay. So it's good to have the save. So I don't think this engine's great for precise platforming. Or maybe not even the engine, but just the the hitboxes for these characters in particular. It's okay, it gets the job done, but it does feel a little janky sometimes. That's a shame because I want those precise platforming opportunities. Like we we had one in the boss there, Skull Man. We had to do that with precision, and that was exciting. So it's too bad they don't play out quite as well as we want them to.
had it. So I was getting a little bored, and then Skullman came and gave us a nice little challenge, and not so bored anymore. So that's, that's a good example of what, in my mind, is good pacing. A little late, but not too late. stage, but I would like those weapons, I think. Wait, we can't carry them from one stage to the next. Is that the end of the stage? We'll find out. I'm going to look around a little more. No, we have to go that way. Okay. There's no crawling, right? It's not coming down until the switch is pressed again. Oh, lots of stuff going on, okay. Okay, you can't press the switch again. Alright, reload. Time for another plan.
Okay, no sense in fighting that thing. There's nowhere to go from there. I guess we get we destroyed that tank off screen. <laughs> Missed the chance to go up there for whatever's up there. Kind of interesting, we went from kind of a slow corridor side-scroller with a bunch of doors to uh, pretty fast action scenes. Aid kit. Nice. Oh, we can't touch it while it's exploding. I feel like that's breaking some sort of side-scrolling action platformer rule. You can touch it once it's exploding. Thank you. 
lot of ammo now. Oh man, he just fell right on us. We had so many lives earlier. I wasn't worried about losing them all in the stage after the sewers or whatever, but it would have been nice to keep a couple around. Maybe we'll pick up a few more. It's tough because standing there and waiting is as bad as rushing in. That's good small talk. Lab entrance. We picked up an extra life there, so that's good. Puts us in a better spot. I thought that health was restored between levels, but I guess not. So we need to pick up a first aid kit. Thank you. 
It's easy to get killed by something just off screen, but you can also do the same to them. Those grenades don't damage them. So I guess we'll look for a different weapon. And come back. Okay, Mangle's waiting for us, specifically. I wonder if Snake is the target all along. And all of this is just an elaborate scheme to get him... ...get him to come.
So gems are life in this game, just like in Caverns of Kraz. Maybe they share the same universe? That's a weapons cache. We don't have anything, man. How do we avoid getting hit by that? How do we avoid it? Another one. I guess you almost want to be right up on it, because then it's not going to hit you with its rockets there.
never know where this guy's gonna start. It'd be real nice to have the code for that weapons locker. an option <laughs> all the time hidden by the heads up display up there. Of course they didn't expect me to do that. So I think I did see the color scheme. So is that magenta? Well, it's ambiguous. Magenta, green, yellow, orange, cyan, orange, magenta.
easy to take a hit. A cheap hit. Maybe blue is first because that's the shard color. It actually just tells you when you attempt it. Weird. Okay.
this time. Let's try going upstairs first. Good. got the red shard for that next platform. Here's the color pattern. We already know it, but cyan, blue, red, magenta, green. Now we've got the last shard that we need, the blue shard. So close. Okay, where's the hostage down here? So fortunately they can't turn around. Oh. 
Oh. It all fell apart there. So this is the, this is the last stand. We have two lives. I'll just go ahead and do a second save. Let's see. I'm going to end stream soon, but maybe this will be an easy boss fight. We'll see. So there's going to be a weapons locker. So that's red, magenta, blue, green, and cyan. that special door as a strategy. Oh, that's him. I didn't see him transform last time. Nice move, dude. to get up here. So we can head down here, place some landmines, head through the secret door. from here, I think. Nice. Oh, there he is. He returned back to human form. Master Kane. Master Kane is behind this. Nice death scene artwork, by the way. Cool. I, I was wrong, it's not just the one city that's in peril. This is a straight up Austin Powers situation.
nice cliffhanger. Okay, that wrapped up pretty well. I liked the second half of that game, or at least the last one-third of it, more than I liked the beginning. Interestingly, that's kind of unusual. But the action picked up, the challenge picked up, and things got interesting. And I liked how the story arc changed at the end. Nice. So that's that's Biomenace. I think when I played that before, I did get to Skullman, and I think I maybe wasn't able to get past Skullman and quit there because I don't remember that last end with Doctor Doctor Mangle and everything. So I'm glad I gave that a playthrough, and I'd recommend a playthrough. So that's it for this stream. Maybe we'll do episodes 2 and 3 at a later time, because I think they're promising. Yeah, thanks for watching. See you later.